So how do you give him that time? How do you keep him hooked enough, long enough for him to have the time to produce those receptor sites so that it can catch the vasopressin? Ladies, understand this. Love is a science. We think because we've been watching way too many Disney movies, we think that love and attraction is just this romantic thing that just happens, okay? You know, the the poor little prince, princess, she's like a damsel in distress, and then the prince comes riding on his white horse to save the day. No, ma'am. That kind of thinking has led to us getting hurt over and over and over again. Now, before I get started, let's get rid of the Build-A-Bears, okay? I'm noticing that there's more and more Build-A-Bears that are starting to follow me. Y'all, they're getting hipped. They're getting hippity hippity. And they don't want me to share with you what it is that I'm sharing with you. So, here's the deal. It's not like the movies. And, and here's another thing that I find with women. Like, we date based on what our emotions tell us to do, right? And we think because our emotions are telling us to do something that is the right thing to do. But that very thing your emotions have told you to do is sabotaging you from attracting not only a man, but a good masculine man who will add value to your life. Now, listen ladies, you have two options. And you tell me which kind of man that you want. You can attract a feminized boy, build a bear, who is the type of man that wants you to take care of him. He's the kind of guy that doesn't know how to treat you. He makes you feel drained. He makes you feel unseen. He makes you feel like he doesn't care about your feelings. Or, or, you can attract a masculine man who wants a woman who he can pour into, do for. He loves pursuing her and then giving to her. It feeds his masculine energy to make your life easier, to add value to your world. And even though you can do it, he's got your back so that you are able to go do the things that you really want to do, the things that feed you, the things that lift you up and that make you feel good. Which one do you want? The feminized boy or the masculine man? And then here's the thing that a lot of ladies get caught up on this whole the term feminized. Ladies, understand this. Being in your feminine energy is your power. That's a good thing. When you are out of balance and in your masculine energy, have you not know, noticed how it drains you, how it works against you? Because when you're high in your masculine energy, you attract a man who's high in his feminine energy. When he's high in his feminine energy, it decreases his testosterone, it raises his cortisol, and then that, mean, that means he has more stress hormone. When a man is stressed, he's angry, he's toxic. He is unable to provide for himself or be good for himself mentally, emotionally, or financially, let alone be that for you. So you, especially if you're a woman who wants a man that's going to pour into you and add value to yourself, you want a masculine man. Now, in order for you to be able to attract that masculine man based on the law of polarity, you've got to be in your feminine energy. And let me tell you why. Okay? Class is a session. When this man sees you, ladies, regardless of how great the chemistry is, because oftentimes, we are looking for the spark supply. We're looking for the chemistry to be off the chain amazing. A lot of times, all that connection is, is trauma bonding. That's all it is. It is your subconscious mind recognizes the same characteristics that attracted you to the last guy because it stems from whatever the traumas and the love blocks that was birthed in childhood. So when you see a guy, his testosterone is triggered. Why is his testosterone is triggered? His desire for sex is triggered for you. So when he pursues you, his biochemistry is saying, I want to have sex with her. I am willing to have sex with her. That's what it's saying, ma'am. He doesn't know you from Sally's Adam cat, okay? So no matter how great the conversation is, men don't bond like that. You might have been talking to him for five, six, seven hours, and you think the chemistry is amazing, and you, because women are auditory, and we are emotional, so we don't really need much in order for us to start producing oxytocin, which is our bonding hormone. We don't need much. But for a man, he requires more. He requires difference. Ladies, men fall harder and take longer to get over heartbreak than a woman. 
And when a man falls for you, his testosterone drops, which is a risk to a man. Because when a man's testosterone starts to drop, he loses certain abilities that come with him being a man. If you don't believe me, get this book right here. The Male Brain, okay? Luann Brizendine. She's the author, all right? Luann Brizendine, The Male Brain. She talks about it. Another book that's really good. Uh, Men Chase, Women Choose. This is by um, Dawn Maslar. I talk about Dawn Maslar a lot. Love her, okay? Her book is also really good. Another one that's a really good one to, cho- to read and to study is Dr. Helen Fisher. Dr. Helen Fisher, she talks about how when his testosterone is triggered, it is lust at first sight. It's never love at first sight. So understand what his primary goal is. His primary goal is procreation. That's how humans are able to keep the human species alive. So after the first phase, the attraction phase, you enter into the second phase, which is the courting phase. In the courting phase, ladies, this is the phase where he is doing the work to get it. What is he getting, okay? Y'all use your imagination, but y'all know what he wants to get, it, okay? He wants to get your snacks, your yummy yummy, (laughs) your cookie monster. That's what he wants to get, that's his goal. That's what you need to tell yourself the truth, but that's what his ultimate goal is. Now you, being a smart diva, being a diva who has been smart enough to do what it is that I'm teaching you to do. You have gotten my formula. You have chosen yourself. You're either in my Patreon, you're in Diva University. So you already armed with what this man is looking for and you know how to date in a way that makes him come to you, that gives you more options. You already know how to do that. So this man is pursuing you. As he is pursuing you, here's what's happen, happening to him biochemically. His testosterone and his serotonin is dropping. But what's going up is his vasopressin and dopamine. Now, for a woman to bond, it requires oxytocin and dopamine. For a man to bond, it requires vasopressin and dopamine. So when a man is pursuing you, ladies, you, you know when he's like excited for you and he is like really into you and... He is like showing up, calling you, everything else. And then when you're into him, you want to know what's happening? They're not all lying. They're not all faking. Like, he really is falling for you. He's starting to produce that vasopressin. He's starting to produce that uh, dopamine. And he's falling for you. But here's what happens, the part where he starts to drop off and lose interest. Ladies, if you start to chase him, if you start to be the one that is trying to prove your worth and your value to him, then what that does is it causes his vasopressin to drop. It also causes his testosterone that caused him to pursue you to drop. You're biochemically interrupting the process because when a man is doing for you, it makes him feel good. His his masculine energy, the testosterone, that doing energy produces more vasopressin. So the more he does for you, the more he's falling for you. As he's falling for you, he's producing vasopressin and dopamine. However, here's the caveat. It takes a man at least two and a half to three months to really biochemically fall for you. Why? Because even though he's been producing that vasopressin and that dopamine, his receptors are not, there's not enough to catch him. His testosterone is also too high. So if he's the kind of man that's in the market, or if he's finding you sexually attractive, that produces a surge in testosterone. In order for his receptors to receive the vasopressin to be present, according to Don Maslar, then that means he needs time in order to biochemically fall for you. So if you're jumping in bed with him, according to Dr. Don Maslar, it causes an interruption in the vasopressin and the vasopressin starts to go down. Also what happens is, is called the Coolidge effect. The Coolidge effect is when his testosterone is no longer triggered by you. He's no longer sexually triggered to pursue you anymore. He needs time. So how do you give him that time? How do you keep him hooked enough long enough for him to have the time to produce those receptor sites 
so that it can catch the vasopressin, so that it can catch the dopamine. How do you do that? Curiosity, anticipation. Before you give him your nook nook, ma'am, you gotta give him your mind. You gotta get his mind. If you give him this before you have gotten this, ma'am, you're done. It's done. Call it a wrap. It's dead on arrival. Okay? Uh, clock out. Uh, it's time to sit this one out. Game over. There's nothing you can do. And that's the problem because a lot of times women think that the more sex that we give a man, then that's going to revive his initial attraction to us, but it's not. Remember, the Coolidge effect.